this one is really talking about the dream, the dream that George and Lenny have, the dream of uh, being their own bosses, living off the fat of the land. Um, and there's a couple different parts of the piece that I think you really need to focus on that are specific as to um, whether or not George and or Lenny uh, believe that they would one day get this piece of land. When it comes to Lenny, I think it's an easy sort of assumption that at any point in the piece, Lenny believes they are going to get this land. I think Lenny does have the uh, mental capacity to think or to understand that they are more likely to get the land after Candy offers the money. But I think it's a pretty much a safe bet that from start to end, mm -hmm. Lenny is someone who believes the dream can happen. With George, it's a little bit different because early on when he talks about the dream, it's very robotic, it's very formulaic, it's very rehearsed. And that might point to him not necessarily believing that it's true, but just being something that he says to, uh, something that George says to Lenny to help him, to help motivate him. Um, when, when George talks to Candy and when Candy offers the money, there is obviously a change in the way that George sees this dream. And there is a phrase in that chapter that says something to the effect of this thing that they had never really believed in was coming true. And that not only gives us some information about that they, it says they never really believed in it, but then in that moment, they do think that it is coming true. So that line is really telling about how they felt before and how they feel now. Then after Lenny kills Curly's wife, um, there's a line that says something to the effect of, you know, Candy spoke his greatest fear and his greatest fear is, can we still get that place, George? And George's response is basically, I think I knew that it was never going to happen, but I just liked, Lenny liked to hear about it so much that I thought that maybe it was going to become true or we were going to like speak it into existence. So this is really a question where you kind of have to trace how George has felt throughout the course of the entire piece. And I think that it's a little bit of a roller coaster. It's a little bit of a, not so much in the, in the beginning, maybe in the middle, there is some real hope that this could become a reality. And at the end, he reminds himself that there's a, uh, not really a chance of that happening. There's also a piece in chapter four, and I always go back to chapter four, but there's a piece in chapter four where Crooks says, all sorts of guys come through this ranch. Everybody's, everybody's got a little piece of land in their head and nobody ever gets it. And I think that that is really telling as well. In that moment, Crooks gets corrected because Candy's like, no, 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 dude, we have the money. But I think that 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 phrasing can still stand, especially at the end of the piece where they don't, they don't get the land. They're not going to get the land. This is not something that George and Candy are going to continue to do. And I think that Crooks's assessment of that situation, ain't nobody ever get that land is fair. And we should keep it in the back of our mind.